So let, let's talk a little bit about the Sci-Fi Channel to begin with, because I think everybody uh, very familiar with that. How, how did uh, the idea to establish this cable network come about? I'm going to let him take it, and then if I don't like his answer, I'll correct it. All right. It's going to be a long night. Uh, so it was my idea, um, and Lori said, why not a hair and makeup channel? She really did. Um, but so what I did was, she, most people, when they first hear the idea, now that it's out there and successful, it's easy to think how obvious it is, um, was to take Lori, my first test case, to what was then Blockbuster Video, no longer exists today, and show all the shelf space devoted to science fiction. And then to bookstores, keep in mind, this is pre-internet, um, and so, when, and then the, the highest grossing movies ever were and still are in the science fiction category. And so with that as our um, kind of foundational, um, easy to do research, we then got more serious and hired the Gallup organization, a leading polling company, to uh, research people around the country and they came back after charging us a small fortune with a several hundred page analysis uh, showing that the Sci-Fi Channel, based on their polling, would be more popular than MTV, which was extremely popular back then and at about the same level of popularity as Nickelodeon. So we used that Gallup report, we leveraged that in our meetings with cable operators to get distribution of the channel. So that's, um, and the Gallup report was really what sealed the deal uh, with Lori because now we had the strength of a reputable polling organization uh, behind our gut instinct that it would be successful. So then jumping from that, it, it became very apparent to us that science fiction has, um, a, people that are into science fiction are into science fiction and you really need to be um, you have to be respectful of that, and neither Mitchell nor I could go out into that community and say, you know, we're, we're aficionados. So we decided that we needed to bring on some real talent, some real heavyweight um, names to help us as we were out there selling it. And, it's, and selling, as an entrepreneur, that's what you do. You have an idea and you have to sell it. So we thought of the two leading names in the time, uh, at the time, Gene Roddenberry, the creator of Star Trek, and Isaac Asimov, you mentioned, um, well, I think somebody mentioned it. Um, Isaac Asimov, the, really considered the, fa the father of science fiction, the most prolific science fiction writer. So uh, you could just take the attitude, I'm just gonna call them up and say, hey, Gene, hey, Isaac, I want you to join my board of advisors. What do you think? Except I didn't know them, and they did, certainly didn't know us, and I didn't have their phone number. So you, uh, as an entrepreneur, we had to think about how do we get to these iconic men? How, how do we do it? And it was a long journey of finding people that had some connection with them, selling those people, and having them help us get to them. Ultimately, we were able to do that. And Gene Roddenberry and Isaac Asimov joined the board, and that was a huge moment in the time, in the development of the science fiction channel, sci-fi channel, because then we had our legitimacy. We could go out and speak to science fiction fans and if we brought Gene or Isaac or both, um, we got a lot of attention and we got a lot of press. And when you're trying to sell something, and today it's of course social media and influencers, but you need that. You need people out there touting your idea and helping you reinforce it so that people take you seriously. 